Hey you, Stud Doogie here with episode 2 of my Zombie Army 4 Dead War playthrough. Uh, this is a challenge playthrough. This episode is going to be split up into two parts. Not as two separate videos, but sort of two separate bits of commentary. Because in the very first episode, um, there were a lot of things I glossed over because I hadn't quite figured out uh, who my audience is. And in this one, I kind of... Now that I've made the first video, I kind of have a better understanding of what it is I want to accomplish. Um, what I want to accomplish with the series. So, uh, I just have a better sense of who my audience is or what it is I want to make sure that I cover. And I'm just going to, in this first part of the commentary, go over some of the systems involved. Because I'm not assuming that you, you the viewer, have played the game or have any idea about any of the systems and mechanics in this game. Okay, so as far as the series is concerned, uh, the criteria for it is that it's going to be the story playthrough primarily. I may do Horde stuff later, but at least initially, it's going to be the story content. It's going to be on hard difficulty because I don't have Brutal unlocked, nor would I even play on Brutal because Brutal gets rid of the HUD and I can't, I need a reticle, I need a cross here. My screen's too wide to always try to find the center of the screen. So it's going to be on hard difficulty because that's the only difference between hard and brutal. Um, you no longer have a HUD and it's going to be four player enemy setup. What that means is basically this game and all the games in the series really is a co-op game. So up to four player co-op. But you can play it solo and you can select, at least you could in Zombie Army, Army Trilogy, um, how you wanted the game to treat how enemies spawn. So you can do between the default and up to four players. So I'm going to be doing it solo, but the game is going to be behaving as if there are four players playing the game. That means that there's going to be a lot more zombies spawning. And it also affects the health of bosses. So the, the boss health is going to be significantly higher, making it more difficult. So that's that's step one. And the sort of challenge objective is to complete each subchapter or each yeah, each subchapter in a mission um, with gold ranking. So you can get bronze, you can get let me show you what that looks like. Um, See, this is the different rankings. So I got gold already because I've already played through these, but you know, you got like bronze, silver, and gold. So we want to get the gold ranking because that's the highest ranking. And that's important because it increases the amount of XP that we get. And we want to get as much XP as possible because that's how we level up. And every, you know, I think it's like every five times you level up, you get an upgrade kit. And an upgrade kit is what you need What's the currency required to upgrade your weapons in the game? So we're going to go into the systems here. So you have a sense in case you haven't played this game and you have no idea what's going on. Some of the, that there are actually choices and decisions being made. So let's talk about the systems. The first systems, of course, is going to be the weapon systems, and you have different weapons you can choose from, and the weapons can be upgraded, kind of like a skill tree, right? And this is what the upgrade kits are used for. So each one of these. Um, has a uh, um, a requirement. You can't see it now because it's already unlocked. But when I if I select one that isn't locked, um, let's try the repeater and we go to upgrades. You see that it's locked and it says unlock requirement. You got it. Um, dismember 50 enemy limbs. So once the base has been unlocked, then you can upgrade. Right. So um, this one. Rails charge over time. This one model expanded to allow electrical arcs, and um, so on and so forth. So, I'm going to be choosing uh, the the damage mod for this gun because this gun is a, a good fire rate, good reload speed, but medium damage. So you want to squeeze a little bit more damage by going with the damage mod. I'm going to go with the extended magazine size of 30 mags because I, I do main the sniper rifle. There are two other weapons. Um, you can carry up to four weapons. You can pick up heavy weapons in game and that would be your fourth weapon. Um, but your your three other weapons are going to be your sniper rifle, 
um, your supplemental and your pistol, or your, they call it the secondary. So, but I prefer to main the sniper rifle and then use the secondaries very rarely, at least thus far. So I choose the magazine size because again, it's my main. I don't have to be reloading all the time with 30 in the mag compared to five in the mag of some other snipers. The other one is the full auto. This doesn't work well in my opinion because the recoil is too high. So yes, you do fire faster with full auto than you can clicking furiously, but because of the recoil issue, it's not as effective. And for the scope, I'm going with the electronic, the electric bayonet, not because it's useful, but because if I go with the vampire scope, it creates a red hue, a red tint when you aim down sights. And in some maps, it's fine. In other maps, it's a pain in the ass. So at least in this, the, this early part of the mission, um, we shouldn't be taking too much damage because we're going to be engaging enemies at range. So I'd rather have a clear view than the the minuscule health and it is minuscule it's not like you get a ton of health whenever you land a crit it's minuscule so um, I'd rather not obscure my vision by going with the uh, vampire scope and instead going with the electric bayonet okay so that's the one of the weapon systems um, oh, 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 oh the other thing I should mention is that once you've unlocked all of the different um, upgrade options you then can try to master gain mastery of your weapon i'm calling it masterwork i'm stealing that term from destiny 2 when you masterwork weapons so whatevs and this one has killed 10 snipers by shooting them through their scope with your gun and once you complete that it increases damage and unlocks a new skin so i will be trying while i'm doing this series to achieve um, some of those objectives Okay, so the shotgun one is more um, sort of front of mind because it's more applicable to actual gameplay. And which is why I'm making some of the choices that I'm making. I am choosing rate of fire over arc because I need to be, to gain mastery as you can see over here, I need 200 triple kills or above with a trench gun. So I only got tw already got 28, so I will be continuing to try to work on that. So fire rate is more um, important because the, the the electrical arc it'll stun enemies but it doesn't really kill them at least it doesn't kill the, the enemy you shoot the, the, when it arcs off from the enemy you shoot onto a secondary enemy most of the time it doesn't actually kill so I'm better off with the rate of fire uh, this is a shotgun of course which means that it's max size is shit therefore Getting the maximum max size is going to be useful, which is why we're going with the cartridge rail. Damage, I have switched it to the slug damage because slugs pierce better than pellets, right? So pellet is you fire a single bullet, but within that bullets are smaller pellets that spread out and they may not pierce and kill as effectively as what the slug does. So this is the reason why I'm making the slug choice is so that I can make progress on the masterwork. Once my masterwork is done, I'm going back to the pellet because I find the pellet to be more effective. This gun I use to stop um, charging enemies like suiciders. And if you miss, then you know, you're screwed. Uh, but if you have the, the pellets, then there's a chance that your pellet can still hit him and, and take him down. But for the purposes of the masterwork, we're going with the slug option. Next up is my pistol. I very rarely use the pistol, um, but I use the Webley because if I do run out of bullets, it is a hard hitting weapon. And um, I'd rather a hard hitting uh, low capacity weapon because I have uh, you know a 30 round hard hitting sniper rifle. So it's fine to have a low capacity weapon in this slot when I have um, so many rounds in my sniper. Okay, so as you can see, this isn't even fully upgraded, right? Because I'm, I'm still on the journey of completing the game and reaching max level and all of that. So we'll be figuring some of this stuff out together as we go through this content. Okay, so that's system number one, the weapons. The second system in the game are the melee. Uh, now, melee 
depending on the one that you choose is just the way to take down enemies quickly uh, it's not that great but I think Divine Blast is the best one because you can hit a group of enemies and it's a way to get some health back. Um, and it's, I think you can also use it to, to stop enraged enemies from being enraged. And we'll see enraged enemies when we get into the second chapter. So that's why I use Divine Blast because of its area of effect um, ability. Because I don't need my melee to kill things, I have guns to do that. So. It's more of a support function for me in the way I play versus being a, um, an offensive option. The third system is the perks. And I mentioned perks before. And uh, so what I was talking about in the first episode when I was talking about I have this perk where I need to get kills. I, I said 200, but it's neat. I need 150 kills over 50 meters while emptying my lungs. So that was what I was talking about in the first episode. And I was saying that I'm using um, the empty lung thing, not because I needed it, but because I want to make progress on this particular perk. Now, for me, this perk is Carl's perk uh, because he has some abilities. And we're going to get into another system when we talk about him um, that that synergizes well with this particular perk so most of these perks are unlocked by reaching levels which is yet another reason why we'd want to get uh gold rating so we can level up rank up faster and unlock these even faster so the perk set that i'm going to be running with is going to you know what i'll go into the perks that i'm going to be running with when i get into part two of this uh of this commentary when you actually do the gameplay. So the point being is that there are perks and to level up your perks, there's certain objectives that must be met. And one of the objectives that I will be working on during the series is the uh, unlocking the, the final level of this particular perk, the sniper focus by getting those empty lung kills at over 50 kilometers. Okay. And finally, your character is also a system because if you look over here, it tells you what abilities and what weaknesses a character have. So you can select a character based upon what it is you're trying to accomplish in the mission and not just because you like the way the character looks. So there's actually functional specific reasons why you may want to pick one character over another. Now my go-to is generally Carl because of his overkill ability and the fact that Empty Lung costs less for him and Empty Lung is really, really useful when fighting bosses. So you're able to get more shots in on a boss with Carl than you would with other players because of the reduced stamina cost of empty lung. Also increased critical hit chance um, on long range shots. That's not that really important, especially with bosses because you should be hitting them in their weak spot anyway, which, is, which counts as crits as far as I understand it. Okay, so those are all the systems at work. Uh, there are also item mods, of course. I didn't mention that before. Item mods is another system because you can uh, once you unlock them, you can apply them to different things, you know, med kit, all this different sorts of stuff, and you can choose based on what it is you're trying to accomplish um, the right mod for the situation. So, if you've only played Zombie Army 1 or Zombie Army 2 or Zombie Army Trilogy, Zombie Army 4 is a significant deepening and addition of systems to the series that just simply did not exist in the first three uh, iterations of this game. So I kind of felt uh, maybe I should go over this stuff so you have a better understanding of some of the choices that I'm making as I play through the game. So I'm going to stop this bit of commentary here and then we're going to pick it up uh, when we start the gameplay stuff. All right, catch you on the flip side.